This is a slide from a Dr. Greger lecture from a couple years ago, and he shows very effectively that diet is the number one cause of death and disability in the United States. And if you look at what we're eating as food, look at what we're eating. Two-thirds of our intake comes from processed foods. Two-thirds. This is scary, as scary as a mom, too. A quarter of our foods are coming from animal products. And then a minimal 12% is coming from plant foods, half of which is like an almond and an almond joy, a blueberry and a blueberry pie, not even really intact whole foods. If you look at this, this should be absolutely reversed if we want to do something about our disease and our healthcare crisis that is imminent right now. They think there's food in our food. We really need to go back to eating real food. And that's what this all boils down to. It's whole foods. Don't worry about the nutrients. Don't worry about the ratios. Don't worry about the calories. Just simply eat plants. Keep it simple. OK, let's talk about our bones dissolving without dairy, which is a big concern for many people. This was that picture. Well, I added the text. But this is what I saw in my kids' elementary school cafeteria. Protein keeps you running. Pizza Hut proudly sponsored here. This is being marketed to our children. And as a mother, this horrifies me. And it happened to us, too, way back when. But it's gotten louder. I think the dairy industry is the most brilliant marketing campaign of all time. I really do. It's so uh, insidious and pervasive and bold, as I spoke about before. But let's talk about bone health. So basically, we think if you eat calcium or drink calcium, you will have healthy bones, right? Isn't that what we're taught? You need your calcium. Well, bones are much more complex than that. There are so many other variables that go into ideal bone health. And in my TED Talk, I talked about this because I, I found this out and was really mesmerized by this idea. We think of you're born and you have bones, and then they start to dissolve at a certain point, like 25, age 25 or 30. But no, the bones are alive tissue, and minerals come out, and minerals go in, and it's constantly fluctuating. And I find that fascinating because it's it's... And it's very happy. It's a good, positive, empowering idea that we do have control. We can change the mineralization of our bones at our entire lifespan. How do we do that? Well, multi, multi variable reasons. So, one is there's a lot of different nutrients involved, not just calcium. And exercise. The best thing you can do for your bone health is exercise. If you think about it, you guys know about muscle tissue. You build up muscle. You break down your muscles. You're working, you're working, working. You break down a microfiber tears, these tiny little tears in the, in the tissue. It grows back thicker and stronger. If any of you have ever broken a bone, it grows back thicker and stronger. Same concept. Beat up your bones a little bit every day. Let them grow back. Let them continue to... to stay strong. The goal is to just not reduce bone density at a certain point, right? The goal is to maintain or grow, but you could do it really most effectively with resistance exercise. Now, after the exercise, you need to consider your nutrition. You need calcium, but you could take in calcium till the cows go home, and hopefully they'll go home sometime soon. Um, you also, it won't absorb. It doesn't mean that it's going to absorb just because you're taking it in. There's other factors that will help um, modify or moderate whether it's absorbed or not, one of which is vitamin D, like making sure you have adequate levels of vitamin D in your blood to absorb the calcium. Other nutrients that are involved in bone health, phosphorus, magnesium, potassium, sodium, vitamin D, vitamin K, vitamin B12, and protein. So it's not as simple as calcium in equals bone strength. We do need calcium. It's the most abundant mineral in the body, and 99% uh, of which is in your uh, bones and teeth. And then there's 1% floating around in your blood to help with muscle contraction and your heart function and all of that. But there are plant sources of calcium. And actually, fun fact, kale is better absorbed than dairy milk. People don't talk about that when, you, when you're learning nutrition. Uh, but there are wonderful sources of calcium. And you, just, you do have to pay attention to it because you want to make sure you're getting, what is it, about 1,000 milligrams a day for an average adult. So you can get it from fortified plant milks. You can get it from a fortified juice if you're doing juice. Most people don't do juice. I don't love juice. But there's other sources, almonds, almond butter, sesame, tahini. I love tahini and hummus. It's all, hummus should be a food group. Um, uh, what else? Tofu has it. There, leafy greens have it. There's a lot of different foods. So here's a different way to look at it. 150 milligrams per serving of, and this, these are different ways you could put throughout your day, like a half a cup of fortified milk, two cups of cooked broccoli, a cup of cooked vegetable greens, two oranges have them, dried figs, almond butter, tahini, calcium set tofu, which most tofu is calcium set. 
Another way to look at it is one cup of cow milk has this much, 96 milligrams of absorbable calcium, and so does a half a cup of Chinese cabbage, one and a half cups of kale, or, or less if you cook it. 5.4 ounces of tofu, two cups of white beans, two and a quarter cups of broccoli, one and a half cups of calcium fortified plant milk. So you can get it, you just have to kind of, you know, space it out and put it in throughout your day. And it is, this is just to show you the things that inhibit absorption and things that enhance absorption. And it really, there are a lot more, a lot more issues in, um, it, besides just getting enough calcium that comes into play. So I do recommend, because of the oxalate issue, a lot of people come to me, they, I eat leafy greens, I eat spinach every day. I would recommend the low oxalate greens, at least to preferentiate the low oxalate greens because that calcium is gonna be better absorbed. So some low oxalate greens in, include all of the lettuces, cabbage, kale, also should be a food group, <laughs> um, arugula, broccoli, pea greens, watercress, and I would just kind of minimize the delicious Swiss chard, rainbow chard, um, beet greens, spinach, those are just higher in oxalates. So it's not an issue for most people, but just mix up your greens, and that's with everything, just variety, and I do like to preferentiate those.